Welcome back to learning solidity. Now, in today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at gas. This is basically something that a few people have posed the question of me. What is gas? How is it used? And so forth. So today I'm gonna to tackle all these sort of questions, I hope. Now, essentially gas is the, the driving force of the Ethereum network and is quite embedded in everything we do, especially around smart contracts. Now, even if you're making a simple transaction on the network from one um, address to another and just send in ether, that's going to require some degree of gas. Now, gas basically has two weightings, the gas consumed or the gas required for the transaction and the gas price. Now, the gas price, surprisingly, is something that you define you might be thinking okay if i'm defining the gas price why don't i just set it to nothing or whatever the smallest value i can possibly set it as theoretically you can the problem comes is when someone has to process your transaction you're paying such a little amount that no one's going to want to pay it so you have to be pragmatic about the gas that you specify now funnily enough there is actually a website which can give you an indication of this so for instance, let's just say that you want to set um, that your transaction cost is one GWE. Now, GWE, as if you remember in the previous tutorial, I covered was a basic a weighting or a, a denomination of WE, which is obviously the smallest denomination in the Ethereum network. Now, GWE, I used to think it was called ga it was stood for gas we, but it doesn't. It stands for gigawe or a million we. Now you're probably thinking mm, that seems like a lot for a single transaction. Again, it, it's everything circumstantial. Well, everything essentially is uh, relative. So let's say that you want to send a transaction and you're going to set one GWE as your price for the transaction. The reality is that your transaction probably isn't going to get processed because the miners have to or basically state that I will mine or X amount of transactions on the network, but I'm only going to mine those that say, for instance, pay two GWE or higher. So if you're setting one you, your transaction is never going to get processed and obviously it can't just be one person processing that transaction it has to be x amount of people on the network processing your transaction before it's confirmed so reality is you have to set a realistic price now we have this website for instance called uh, earth gas station i'm going to leave a link in the description box down below which gives you an understanding of the current price that the miners are expecting you to pay to process your transaction and it's kind of scaled as well so you, there is not just a single deterministic figure that you provide and that's it there is um, like I say a scale uh, so obviously the more you pay the more your transaction will get prioritized to process faster and this is kind of if you've ever seen a transaction over the ethereum network saying I want it to be processed faster you are basically just stating that I'm going to be paying more gas for my transaction so let's just have a quick look at what I mean by this. So if you see, you have this um, box called confirmation time by gas price. So you're stating, for instance, that I'm going to be paying uh, one GWE. Now I think this is actually an error because I don't see how paying one is faster than almost well, almost a quarter of the speed of saying I'm going to be paying two. So it, let's you know take this with a pinch of salt. I'd say start from two onwards is more of a realistic scope of things. I'm gonna be paying two GWE, um, and that means that my transaction on average is gonna take 8.9 minutes to process or get the confirmation I need before it's a valid com or it's a valid transaction. Okay, so after that, let's say I'm gonna be paying three GWE. Now I'm paying, uh, now I'm waiting 1.9 minutes for that transaction to be processed. And like I say, with this, it scales. So if you pay four, you're talking 1.2 minutes, 5.7 minutes, six onwards, 0.5 minutes. Now, like I say, miners aren't, uh, you know, stupid. They're not gonna say if you pay 50 G, we were gonna process it in 0.1 seconds. It still requires X amount of um, confirmations um, before your transaction is verified. So you still have to wait a realistic time scale. Um, there's also a little uh, GWE sort of price estimate here. And um, to be honest, uh, it's saying a GWE price is 10. It's gonna take a couple more than two minutes. Well, to be honest, if you look at the sliding scale of this, 
paying five or more is is going to be under two minutes in theory. Actually, I think under three or more. But again, you've got to be you've got to be pragmatic. This isn't this isn't always going to be a static value. This is going to change constantly. So we've covered the basics there of just what the price of the gas is. So how is the rest calculated? Now the, the standard calculation as stated by the Ethereum documentation is gas price times gas. Okay, so where's gas coming from? Gas is essentially the value of your transaction itself rather than a, a set price. So the transaction value itself comes from a couple of factors. If it's a simple, um, transmission of ether from one contract to another is generally quite low um, so the cost is is almost negligible but if it's something like a smart contract it gets a little bit more complicated because there's actually a few factors that calculate the gas um, consumed so obviously that you've got the gas consumed times the gas price so this is where things come quite pricey now there is actually a predefined gas execution or, or gas transmission cost um, within uh, Solidity. And that's essentially defined within the actual Solidity source code. And you can actually see an overview of this um, within the Solidity source code. And I'll leave a link to this in the description box down below as well. So you can see basic things calling the, um, the hashing mechanism uh, Keka um, is it gonna cost you 30 gas just as simple as uh, there's no there's no way around it um, a log is 375 gas log data gas is 8 log topic gas is 375 and so forth the, there's basically these are usually references to really really low level uh, function calls rather than anything top level um, but let's just delve into a little bit of code so we can understand where our gas costs are coming from rather than me trying to explain the source code of solidity so we've got this smart contract it's a very basic smart contract okay let's look at something quite simple now the more that you require data to be stored on the blockchain the more expensive these things are going to start costing the more processing you have to do again the the more expensive these things will cost so let's just look at something super super simple okay so let's first create a really basic function that's going to be a cheap um a cheap gas uh, contract should we say or a cheap gas um uh, transaction so let's create a function let's call it um cheap and then let's just simply say that it's going to be public and it's going to be pure because we're not going to store anything on the blockchain we don't need to interact with the blockchain or anything and we're simply going to return a unit okay now actually what i'm going to do is make this a very simple function by uh, unit uh, a and unit b and we're simply going to return unit of C. C is just going to be equal to A plus B. Okay, so that's our super, super simple contract. Now let's just deploy this. There's FYI, like uh, similar, uh, like uh, like some of my other tutorials, don't forget to set your environment as JF or VM, or if you do have, obviously, um, something like metamask or something set up you might be able you know, might want to use injected web3 or the web3 providers but for now i'm going to keep this quite simple so okay we've got our simple contract deployed now let's actually just execute a, a very simple transaction on the network so we're going to say one and one so obviously we're kind of expecting two to be uh, returned from this obviously we can see it returned but that's not what we're after we're after the gas okay so we have um, two gas values here. We have transaction cost and execution cost. So what's the difference between the two? Okay, so the transaction cost is the amount of data that's needed to be sent. And what I mean by that is, for instance, this is your transaction hash. This is the data that we're sending over the network. And that's essentially where the value of the transaction cost is coming from. The execution cost is the computational power required to get our result from our transaction. Now, in this case, we're adding A to B and returning C. 
that's a really really simple simple um, transaction or really simple um, uh, computation so it's actually quite cheap now 324 gas is really cheap trust me I've seen a lot of transactions on the network um, and a lot of execution of smart contracts so I say on the network and that is really cheap so let's look at a really expensive one now um, what we're going to do is we're first going to define a, a something in data so let's create a string let's um, let's say uh, data store and then let's make an expensive call this time so public yeah, sorry, function expensive and string value Now this is going to be public and it's not going to return anything and that is pretty much all we need. So why is this complaining? Ah yes. This is even more expensive because I need to use memory too. So if you want to look at a cascade of um, prices or a cascade of expensive values, at the top you're going to have anything in your storage under that memory and under that your your stack essentially so what we're doing here is simply just going to be stack calls there's not going to be anything above that here we've already defined that we need some memory so memory is now being used but we're going to make it even more expensive by adding something to the data store so we're going to be push something into that we're going to push value in so now we have obviously the function down here let's just do have a, a quick comparison of the two just clear that, deploy the new contract, get rid of the old one. Uh, let's first have a call the cheap one. And then let's compare that to the expensive one, so test. Okay, so obviously the cheap one we still expect to be quite cheap. Yeah, it is. So 22,000 gas to send the transaction, which is just this one here. Then 346 gas to execute our transaction which is just basically going to be what this is here so now our expensive call let's have a look at this so we have our transaction we have a transaction cost of three thousand sixty three thousand four hundred and sixty which is only three times as much as our previous one obviously this time as well we're sending a little bit more data than we previously did and we're our, the only big difference is our execution cost. So, for instance, our execution cost, 346 for this. Look how much, if you look at how much code that is, that is 41,420. Now, the reason is this if we're accessing memory, we're accessing storage, we're going to start mounting up our cost because we're not only just using computational power, we're storing data on the network as well. So, the miners are going to charge us high fees for stuff like that. Well, the miners won't charge high fees, but the processing of these transactions will, will essentially cost these high fees. So, okay, if we wanted something a little bit um, less expensive, um, we can call this, um, let's call this average. So what we're simply going to do here is we're going to have a public function and we're going to return a string. Now, just a side note, writes are more expensive than reads. If we're writing something, we're adding it to the network. If we're reading it, we're not adding anything that we wasn't already there before, essentially. So we're not basically increasing the disk consumption of the network. So let's just say data store um, one. Why oh, is this complaining? Uh, string memory thank you and da, 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 da. it's a view okay so let's just have a look at this again so if we deploy this it'd still be quite expensive because we're also uh, we're, vent we're basically jumping into memory and the data store but it shouldn't be as expensive because we're only calling data rather than setting it so if we look, let's just compare the average versus the expensive. So we have the expensive test, and we'll also call wait, where we got a VM error. Ah, let's just, uh, well, technically it was a stack overflow because there was only one element in there and I should have called one. But if I set this twice, I think 
I fixed the error. <laughs> so yeah, that should in theory be one, but I fixed it by adding two elements to the, uh, the storage data. So I basically circumvented my error. Either way, so we look at this. So the transaction cost for sending test, if I'm right, that's sending test, yep, is gonna cost us 48,460 for the transaction. The execution cost is 26,420. And the second call, this is just to call the data. So we're still using memory and we're still using storage, but we're not storing data. So this time the transaction cost is 23,006. 26, uh, 23,006, yeah? and the execution cost itself is 1,734. So it's not too bad, especially when you compare it to what's going on with the execution costs of the writes. So obviously the writes are gonna be a lot more heavy. You're probably wondering why this execution costs less than this execution up here. Uh, that was the creation of the contract. It should have been three uh, gas and the upcode error. Ah, sorry, this one here. So you're probably wondering why this is more expensive than this one here. Now, the reason is, is because at this point we were instantiating the data storage on the network. So you're gonna have that little bit of overhead on the first call to something that creates, uh, for instance, a new element or a new instance of a data store. So every sequential call after that, you'll notice is pretty much the same price. So that should be similar to this price, which is 26,000 gas, so forth. So you see it again, 26,400. Now, obviously that's kind of the only difference between the two calls, which is probably quite good to highlight. Now, I'm gonna also add one last function. Um, I'm gonna call this um, low. And this is just simply gonna be using memory. So similar to the last function public, um, I think I can probably get away with this being pure and returns a string memory. So what we're gonna do is just define a string, call it my string, I think also, no, I don't think I need to define it in memory, do I? And return my string. I think I can get away with that. No, I can't, I do need to find his memory. Okay, this is gonna have a mediocre sort of price to it. So if I redeploy this now, and say average, I think it is average, no, low. The gas price of this is basically 684. So if you compare that to before, where it's like 1,700, this because we're only hitting memory, we're not hitting the data stores. Even though we're setting stuff in memory, it's still not as expensive as hitting the data stores. So the data store is always gonna be our biggest bone of contention when you want to write a smart contract. But unfortunately, it's the only place we can store uh, data persistently on the network. So that in a nutshell is essentially gas within the Ethereum network and essentially gas within Solidity and especially smart contracts. So one keynote you're always going to take from this is be mindful when you're writing functions like this. Now the reason I say that is because you know you add in overhead to the network you're making your contracts expensive to interact with if you make your contract too expensive people don't want to interact with it. So be pragmatic about your approach. Either way, I hope you found this tutorial somewhat useful and enlightening on what the whole concept of gas is within the Ethereum network. Um, I'll leave all the um, links in the description box down below. I hope you found this useful and I will catch you next time.